Olympics again, not your first rodeo. What advice would you have for yourself when you first started your campaign? Well, I think, firstly, I feel lucky if my first one wasn't coming into it. Uh, sort of COVID um, affected Olympics like this. So, um, you know, it's quite different. Um, but first advice, I don't know, enjoy it. But we definitely did enjoy it anyway going into it. So, I don't know, it's kind of, you just gotta, you gotta enjoy the experience. You gotta, um, but you gotta make sure you, you put your best foot forward and really perform the best the best you can. So, I think just get excited by that challenge of knowing you're going onto the biggest sporting stage in the world and and um, and then you're trying to sort of be better or be better than your competition, uh, competitors. And obviously with your live ocean charity sustainability is close to the heart. Mm -hmm. Do you think sailing as a sport is evolving to be more sustainable? Sustainable? Well, well I think sailors are um, you know beginning to show their sort of responsibility that we have for spending so much time on the on the water and, and I think we've been lucky enough to spend so much time on the water, um, that connection we have with the ocean and then how we then have a voice for, for people that maybe don't see things so, so much. So I, I think, you know, maybe we've been a little bit slower as a sport to get to that, um, that stage of trying to um, sort of convey that to everyday people uh, and, and try and sort of lead by example there. But I think you are starting to see um, some change across and that's across the world in a lot of different areas. Some people are in South America and they're concentrating on plastics and you know what the work we're doing with Live Ocean. There's different people all around the world. Um, but yeah, you're starting to see that. But it's going to take um, it's going to take a lot of different people, not just sailors. I think the more ocean champions we can have, the better. So that's um, you know, definitely something we're trying to get more people, um, more people the better. And the dip was a success, a lot of Instagram yeah. shares, social media. Are you planning on doing that during the summer when it's a bit warmer as no, well? No, no, I think we'll, <laughs> we'll keep it at uh, On World Oceans Day, but uh, yeah, I think we might need to bring it a few days forward um, to try and get it, because it was just starting to get a bit of traction and then the day was over. So no, it was great to see a lot of people get behind, behind that. And um, I guess it's quite a, it's a fun way of, you know, doing a challenge, which is quite doable. Obviously it's a little bit challenging getting in the cold water, but you know, I guess it's showing your physical support. Well, that's what we're sort of encouraging people to show their physical support for, for the ambition for a healthy ocean. And um, yeah, I think we started to see quite a few people get around it. So we'll look to build it next year, but near bring it a few days early, I reckon. Yeah. But not summertime. Yeah. Although that some people did it in Europe and it was summer, so. <laughs> I guess it depends on where you are. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And one final question. When you're traveling, what is one non-sailing essential item you need to have with you? Oh. We've had a lot of cards, coffee, um, masks was one because of today's yeah, situation. Um, well, you need good coffee, but I actually quite, get quite en enjoy sort of um, just tasting the local coffee as well because sometimes it's good, sometimes it's crappy. So, <laughs> um, but headphones would be quite good so you can mm. listen to it music on the plane or um, when you're there, so that would probably be it. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you.